Presenting the world's greatest mysteries. And now, your host. This is Basil Rathbone. On a street in Paris, there's a sign denoting the entrance to the offices of one of America's famous newspapers. Out through the entrance, many times has come one roving reporter extraordinary. This has been his starting point for journeys to the capitals and villages of Europe. His aim has been to investigate, to search into, to find the secrets behind those mysteries that result in front-page copy and make the headlines of this famous daily. News which without doubt had its mysterious implications and more likely its menacing moments. In a moment, one such story... It carries Mike's byline, and he tells it the way he saw it. Presenting Europe Confidential. That is Friedhausen, Frau Weinrich. What is it, Ruth? This is where Otto leaves us. We're not a quarter of a mile from the frontier. And the mist's coming up. Tell Otto we'll never be able to thank him enough. Never as long as we live. <laughs> In a moment, we'll bring you Lionel Merton as Mike Canoy, the Paris correspondent of a famous American newspaper, in another exciting story in our series, Europe Confidential. Mike Conoy reporting for Europe Confidential. The story I want to tell you right now is not a new story. It took place almost 20 years ago. At the time, I was a copy boy back in New York, and Europe Confidential was being handled by Paul Rogers, a correspondent with long experience of Europe between the two wars. This story happened to him on an assignment in Germany in 1938. Maybe that's why it has a special interest for me because Paul Rogers was doing exactly the kind of job I'm doing right now, when one morning he walked into the editor's office to meet Andrew Thompson for the first time. Sit down, Paul. Thanks, Chief. Your papers are all in order to leave for that air display in Munich. We got them back from the German embassy this morning. Fine, I'll leave tomorrow night. Yeah, now look, something has come up. Look, I'm not asking you to handle it all. Your job is to go and report that air exhibition they're turning on. But I'll tell you this just the same, and you can make up your own mind about it. About what? Well, Mr. Thompson here is English. He came to see me for the first time last week to find out if I could do anything to help. His daughter is in Germany, and he's unable to visit her there. He simply cannot get an entry permit. Well, why's that, Mr. Thompson? I don't know. I applied several times, and... Each time, the application was rejected. The point is, he hasn't heard from his daughter for over six months, and he's pretty badly worried. But, um, look, suppose you tell it, Mr. Thompson. Yes, of course. Now, let me see. It was... It was four years ago. Yes, 1934. 
when Ruth went over to Germany on a summer holiday trip. She met a man there named Weinrich, Rudolf Weinrich. He was a doctor, a graduate in medicine from Munich University. Over our protests, she married him. Have you met him? Once. My wife and I went to visit Germany in 1936, two years ago. And, of course, we met Rudolf then. Yeah? Well, actually, we were quite impressed. I felt my daughter was happy. Weinrich had begun to make his way as a surgeon. In fact, we heard on good authority he was regarded as brilliant. So we felt things would probably work out for the best. And now? Well, now I'm worried. Devilishly worried. It's six months since I've heard from her. You've written? Every few weeks. There it is, Paul. Look, you'll be in Munich. It might be possible to make a simple inquiry. Why not? Will you do that for me, Mr. Rogers? I'll be glad to. Oh, thank heaven. Just to know that she's all right, that, that it's simply a matter of being too busy to write, would take a great weight off my mind. You better give me your daughter's address in Munich, Mr. Thompson. It's number 25, Leopoldstrasse, Marienthal. Number 25, Leopoldstrasse, Marienthal. She never gave any indication that she might be moving from this address, did she? None whatsoever. Uh, it might be as well for us to have a photograph. Oh, I can let you have a photograph. Now, in the last letter you received, did your daughter give any hint of trouble or unhappiness? Well, she didn't actually say anything, Mr. Rogers, but there were one or two parts of that letter which puzzled me. Puzzled? Ruth was a very vivacious sort of person. Yet that letter... Well, unfortunately, we destroyed it. But even if you had read it, I doubt if it would mean anything... There was nothing she actually said. You feel there was some constraint which was unlike your daughter. Yes, that's it. Constraint. Mm -hmm. And it was unlike her. Well, we have the address, so Paul's inquiries can start from there. And if my daughter's moved away, or... Or if something's happened, then you might try getting in touch with Frau Schmidt. And who's Frau Schmidt, Mr. Thompson? She was a young widow, a friend of Ruth's. She lives in the same street, Leopoldstrasse. We met her when we were in Germany, and... Ruth often mentioned her name in letters. Well, what about the last letter? Oh, no. Oh, now I come to think of it, she didn't. Not in the last letter. Two days later, Paul Rogers was in Munich. After he settled into his hotel, made arrangements for covering the air display on the following day, he went to number 25, Leopoldstrasse, Marienthal, the address that he'd been given as the home of Ruth Weinrich. There, he met his first setback. I'm sorry, mein Herr. I'm unable to help you. I bought this house from Dr. Weinrich, but I cannot tell you his present whereabouts. How long ago did you buy the house, mein Herr? Perhaps six months. I suggest if you wish to contact the doctor, then you should try the postmeister. Perhaps he can be of more assistance. Uh -huh. <laughs> It was when Paul Rogers had to begin making official inquiries for Ruth Weinrich that he decided to use a subterfuge that would explain his interest and his reason for trying to trace the doctor's wife. At the post office, he interviewed the man in charge. Well, Herr Rogers, I understand you wish to see me. Yes, Herr Postmeister. I'm trying to get in touch with my cousin, an English woman who married a Dr. Weinrich in this city some years ago. An English woman? Well, I had an old address... I've learned that the doctor and my cousin moved away, and I'm anxious to locate them. Well, in uh, what way can I help you, mine Herr? Seemed to me that you'd have a record of their change of address. <laughs> Our records are confidential. I could hardly do what you ask without authority. Oh, but look, after all, my cousin... It would have to be authorized. Such things can be arranged, perhaps uh, three or four days, perhaps a week. That wouldn't help. I'm on a business trip, and I won't be staying long. Thanks all the same, Herr Postmeister. I'll have to try and find my cousin some other way. Paul Rogers had not come to Germany to find Ruth Weinrich. That was an incidental, a, a sideline to his real purpose for being in Munich. Yet somehow, as one after another the leads faded out, Paul became determined to locate her. For that reason, he went back to Leopoldstrasse to call on Frau Schmidt, who had been a friend of the doctor's wife. Yeah? There, Doc? Frau Schmidt? Yeah? Uh, my name is Rogers. I'm a relative of Ruth Weinrichs. Can I talk to you? Any minute. Please, please come in. 
Thank you. You speak English? Yes. What about you find it? Well, I'm anxious to get in touch with her as soon as I can. Just passing through, you understand, on a business trip. I went to her old address, but the people there couldn't help. A relative, you said? Cousin, about three times removed. American branch of the family. Her parents asked me to drop by and give their regards. Of course, I agreed. It's proving a bit of a job to find her. Post office wanted me to fill in forms and things, but I don't have time for all that red tape, so I thought you could help. You went to the post office? You spoke to the postmaster? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't very wise here, Rogers. Oh, look here, this is ridiculous. I know things are different to England and the States, but... After all, a man wants to find his cousin, it seems to cause all sorts of complications. Now, do you know where Dr. Weinrich has moved, or don't you? Dr. Weinrich? Yes, I can tell you that. You can? Of course. He has become a very important person. He has moved to Geisel Gasteig. He bought a big new house there. Geisel Gasteig. It's pretty exclusive, isn't it? I told you, Dr. Weinrich has become an important person. Well, what about the exact address? It's not listed in any directory because I've already looked them up. I'm not sure of the exact address, Herr Rogers, but I've no doubt anyone in the district will be able to tell you. A person of his importance would be well known there. <laughs> Paul had no real difficulty in locating the home of Dr. Weinrich. It was quite a shock after the modest house at number 25 Leopoldstrasse. The doctor had graduated to a huge two-story home set in rambling grounds and screened by a high stone wall guarded by iron gates. He was eventually admitted and interviewed an English-speaking servant who seemed to fulfill the duties of a butler. Uh, Dr. Weinrich, sir, I'm afraid that's quite impossible. The doctor is in Berlin at present. It isn't the doctor I wish to see. It's Mrs. Weinrich. I beg your pardon, sir. Mrs. Weinrich. I'm her cousin. Just tell I'm her... I'm afraid there must be some mistake. Mistake? There isn't any Mrs. Weinrich, sir. What? The doctor isn't married. To the best of my knowledge, he never has been. When Paul Rogers left the house in Geisel Gasteig, it seemed as if the trail could end there, and Ruth Weinrich could become one of those untraceable people. The butler had quite obviously spoken what he believed to be the truth. Dr. Weinrich himself was not expected back from Berlin for many weeks. So Paul did the only possible thing left. He returned to see Frau Schmidt, where his welcome was, well, anything but cordial. Well, Herr Rogers, what do you want this time? I thought I made it clear before that I told you all I know. Oh, maybe you can tell me what happened to Mrs. Weinrich. I don't understand. What do you mean? I asked you where I could find the doctor, which was a mistake because you gladly told me. You must have known I wouldn't find Mrs. Weinrich there. I don't know their business. I keep out of other people's affairs. Look, Frau Schmidt, I've got to find Ruth Weinrich. I think you can help me do that, and I want you to trust me. Why should I trust anyone when they lie to me? Why? You're not her American cousin. She hasn't got an American cousin. Really? I think you'd better go, Herr Rogers. How do you know she hasn't got an American cousin? I... Please go. When you answer my question, you didn't know it before. How could you know? Unless since the time I was here last, you found that out. From Ruth Weinrich herself. <laughs> moment in that small house in the Leopoldstrasse, there was silence. Frau Schmidt was the first to break it. I don't know what you're talking about, Herr Rogers, but if you don't leave this house, I'm going to call the police. I don't think you will, Frau Schmidt. Please, leave me alone. I think it's time I told you the truth. I used that cousin routine to explain my interest in Mrs. Weinrich. Perhaps it was a mistake to try it on you. Who are you? My name's Paul Rogers. I work for the paper in Paris. Hey. Newspaper man? I'm here on a routine assignment in Germany. When he found out I was coming, Mr. Thompson asked me to try and locate his daughter. Look, let me try and prove you can trust me. Now, here's my passport. You'll see, and the name's really Rogers. 
Yes. What's more, I can tell you that Ruth Thompson came over here first in 1934, that she met Weinrich and became engaged to him. She went back to England, then returned to Marion. Her parents visited here in 1936. Well, I understand they met you while they were here. That's... that's correct. Of course, if the information doesn't convince you, then I'll just have to ask you to trust me. I... I think I do. Is the Gestapo after Ruth Weinrich? They're not sure. They may be. What happened between her and the doctor? Oh, that's a story Ruth could tell you better than I. Do you know where she is? Yes, I know. Will you take me to her? I understand your caution in the matter. But if she's in trouble, I might be able to help her. Oh, it would be a relief to have someone to trust. Someone who might be able to help her. All right, Herr Rogers. I'll take you to Ruth Weinrich. They left the house and walked almost half a mile through a maze of twisting streets and narrow alleys in the poorer section of Marienthal. Several times, Frau Schmidt stopped and looked behind her to make certain there was no one following them. Finally, they came to a small antique shop. They passed through the shop after Frau Schmidt had spoken briefly in German to the proprietor and climbed a narrow stairway leading to the residence above. One moment here, Rogers. First off, it's me, Elsa. How so? Oh, it's all right, Ruth. This is the man who said he was your cousin, but I think we can trust him. Oh, there's a lot to explain. He's a newspaper man from Paris, from your parents. So, my father actually came to your newspaper office and asked you to find me, Mr. Rogers. That's why I'm here, Mrs. Weinrich. You don't know how much this means to me. Just to realize that somewhere in the world there's someone who even cares what happens to you. I wish it would do some good. We'll talk about that in a minute. How about bringing me up to date on the rest of the story? If you're interested in my troubles. That's my only interest. Right now. I suppose you could say it started when I married Rudolph. I shouldn't have married him, but for over three years we were happy, and I thought it was going to work out. Well, what happened? He was terribly ambitious and very brilliant, and that was the cause of it. When we married, he was just a surgeon, unknown. But inside of three years, everyone was talking about him. Then there was that call to Berlin. Yes. Elsa remembers that call to Berlin. Well, what was the idea? Well, there was an operation to perform. They wanted Rudolph to assist. Who was the patient? Nobody knows for certain. There were all kinds of rumors that it was Goebbels. Others said it was Rudolf Hess. And some even claimed it was Hitler himself. We don't know, Mr. Rogers, but we do know that something happened to the chief surgeon. That at the last minute, Rudolf himself was called on to operate, and that the operation was a success. Yeah, I'm beginning to understand. That explains the sudden rise in the world. The big house at Geisel Gustig and the servants. Hmm. It also explains me. I was an Englishwoman. Rudolf was suddenly an important man in Germany. He had one easy way out, and he took it. There wasn't even a divorce. He simply sold the house and moved, and told me that we were finished. Where did you go? She came to stay with me, Herr Rogers, until that seemed more of a risk than either of us could take. Risk? There were all kinds of rumors being spread about Ruth. People said because she was an Englishwoman, she must be a spy. The Gestapo came once to question her, and then they came back again, only she was gone. I was here, Mr. Rogers, and thanks to Elsa knowing the owner of this shop, I've been here ever since. He doesn't use the residence, and he's one of those people who like to think that even an Englishwoman should be treated as a human being. Did you have much trouble with the Gestapo, Frau Schmidt? I had to lie and say I didn't know where Ruth had gone. I think I convinced them. Mm-hmm. And of course, when I turned up with those questions... You know just how I felt. How long have you been here already? Two months. I haven't been outside or opened the window and looked out in all that time. Now, let me get this straight. You want to go back to England? Yes, Mr. Rogers, I want that very much. Mm -hmm. I'll have to think this over, see what I can work out. Suppose I come back tomorrow and we'll talk again. I can arrange for you to come straight in. I'll introduce you to the proprietor downstairs. Good. I'm at the Savoy in case you want to get in touch. And meanwhile, Mrs. Weinrich, don't worry too much. We'll find a way out of this somehow.
Paul Rogers went back to his hotel to puzzle over the problem of Ruth Weinrich and of her safe return to England. He bought a detailed map and studied it late into the night. Finally, about 1 a.m., he retired to bed with a fair idea of what had to be done. Barely 15 minutes later, drowsy with sleep, he heard a soft, insistent knocking at the door. Oh, what on earth? All right, all right, wait a minute. Frau Schmidt. Quickly, let me in. What's happening? Oh, everything. Those inquiries you made at the post office. The postmaster reported them. It started the Gestapo searching for Ruth all over again. Gestapo? They came to question me earlier tonight. I had to lie and lie. Then I had to wait until it was safe to come out. You're sure you weren't followed? Certain. But it won't be long before they start watching me all the time. And then we'll be helpless. Because they'll watch you, too. Hmm. Seems as if I made things all the more difficult for her. They might have given up entirely, but now they're convinced that there's something in that spy story. There's still time for both of you to get away, but it's got to be tonight. Now. Do you think they'll be watching the station? Sure to be. You've got to keep away from the railways and the main roads. Do you know a place called Auweiss? No, but Ruth I... Ruth does. It's only five miles or so from the Swiss border. I have some friends there, people called Schweigler. They have a farm. Ruth's been there and she'll be able to guide you once you reach the district. They won't ask questions? They're my friends. As for food, I have brought a little. All I had in the house. One day, I hope we can thank you for this, Elsa. Just to remember, when you get back to Paris, Herr Rogers, that there are some people in Germany who want to live in peace. I won't forget. That or anything. <laughs> They made their way west and then south, fringing on the black forest, traveling through hilly country and keeping away from the main roads. A distance of 140 miles that took them seven heartbreaking days. On the evening of the seventh day, they reached the Schweigler farm, where they stayed for 24 hours, and where no questions were asked and hospitality was warmly given. Long before dawn the next day, with Otto Schweigler as guide, they were on their way to Friedhausen, and less than two hours later, they saw the lights of a small frontier town ahead of them. Das ist Spiethausen, Frau Weinrich. Ich muss jetzt zu Rückkehr. What is it, Ruth? This is where Otto leaves us. We're not a quarter of a mile from the frontier. And the mist's coming up. Tell Otto we'll never be able to thank him enough. Bedanken Sie sich nicht. Ich uh, habe gern getan. Alles Gute, Frau Sie weiter. He understood. He wishes us luck. Alles Gute und auf Wiedersehen. And goodbye. They went slowly forward toward the lights of the small town and then swung east toward where they knew the frontier lay. And barely 50 yards from freedom, they crouched, waiting in the mist, waiting until they heard the distant changing of the border patrol. They're relieving the guard now. This is our best chance, Ruth. Ready? Ready. Come on! All right. Yes. We made it, Ruth. Through the fence. We're losing them in the mist. They can't touch us now. Through the wire strands of the border fence and then on into the mist, leaving the shouts of the patrol and the sound of shooting far behind them. They slowed to a walk and finally came into a small Swiss town. It was an hour after dawn. The mist was lifting. And in clear outline against the sky, the mountains of Switzerland lay directly ahead. A few days afterwards, Paul Rogers was back in Paris. Ruth Weinrich was with her parents in England. And the paper had itself a scoop that could have pushed the Munich air display right off the front pages. <laughs> but the irony of the newspaper business never gets into the headlines. They couldn't use the story because of Elsa Schmidt and the safety of the others involved. It never got into print until now. <laughs>
have been listening to Lionel Merton as Mike Canoy in another exciting episode in the series, Europe Confidential. This is Basil Rathbone again. Well, that was Mike's story. This roving reporter friend of ours certainly has what I think the journalistic profession calls a nose for the news. I'll be back again with another of these mystery adventures, and I hope you'll join me. A goodbye now till we meet again to listen to another of the world's greatest mysteries. <laughs>